Hello and welcome to the February edition of Extra. I'm Joanne Hines. And I'm Georgia Lash. Here at Extra we bring you expanded coverage of recently broadcast features from Sun City News. We're not too far into 2019. Georgia, have you stuck with your New Year's resolutions? Um, let's move on to our first story. Okay. If being more active is one of your 2019 resolutions, check out the Sun City Silver Striders. Our reporter, Margie Bruiser, stepped up to get the story of their activities and achievements. I have the pleasure of being here today with Sun City Silver Striders. And our first guest that we're going to introduce is Dean Fleener, who is president of the club. Dean, tell us something about Silver Striders, how you got going and what goes on. Uh, Sun City Silver Striders, we are a chartered group of about 150 members and uh, our goal is basically to um, promote a healthy running and walking lifestyle and uh, to that end we have a running and a walking component. The runners meet Tuesdays and Thursdays here at Lake Somerset parking lot and uh, we run about three to four miles. Anyone is welcome to join us. Uh, the walkers meet from several locations including Hidden Cypress and uh, Perrysburg and they also do a three to four mile walk on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I might add that the walking component also has special walks and just recently they went to the Georgia Botanical Gardens and uh, they've been to Magnolia Plantation. A lot of preparation. And now we're going to hear about a wonderful event that took place on December 1st. And um, Dean's going to tell us about the run. Yes. Well, we competed in what's known as the South's toughest bridge run. And we ran over the what's called the Savannah River Bridge. Uh, it's officially known as the Talmadge Bridge. And this is a bridge that's about two miles long and uh, a height total of 580 feet plus. It's about 200 feet over the water and it has quite a steep slope. There were uh, several races taking place on that day. There was a 5K and for those of you who are not familiar, a 5K is about a little over three miles and there was also a 10K which is a little over six miles. Now with the 5K and most of us competed in that, we did one run over the bridge and then some running in uh, Savannah itself. With the 10K, it's over the bridge and back again, which is quite a feat. And now we're going to meet those fantastic runners that took part in the December 1st bridge run. Hi, I'm Debbie Orlemansky. Um, I ran the 5K and um, competed in the 65 to 69 age group. I was really proud because I came in fifth place out of uh, around 36 people in that age group. So I'm not that competitive, but um, I really run because it's a lot of fun and I like our group of people here. So the hardest thing about the whole race though was figuring out what to wear that morning because <laughs> it was rainy, a little bit cold, a little bit warm, rainy. We didn't know what to wear, so that was the hardest part. Hi, I'm Marilyn Moore and I also ran the 5K in the age 65 to 69 and I came in ninth out of that. Um, very happy with that because this is the first time I ever ran the Savannah Bridge in a, uh, a race like this, so I was really, really enjoyed it. It was a very, very nice experience. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rose Carney and I competed in the same age group as the former two, 65 to 69. I got first place in that group and um, my time was 28 minutes and one second. Hi, I'm Bonnie Sotier and I also competed in the 65 to 69 um, age group. I ran the 5K this year and this was my 18th annual in a row Savannah Bridge Run. So. Hopefully, I'll do number 19 again. Thanks. Hi, Wayne Eckert. I ran the 10K. I was the only one of the Silver Striders that ran it twice over the bridge. <laughs> so I managed first in my age group in the 65-69. It was my first time running the Savannah Bridge, and it was quite a challenge. I enjoyed it. Thank you. 
Hi, I'm Lynn Shepard. Uh, I ran the 5K in the older group, and I came in first place. And I guess my real accomplishment was that in June I fell down two flights of steps, and uh, I'm just happy that I completed it. And my breath was a little slow, but I completed it, so that's good. Participation is the key in the striders, whether you're a runner or a walker. Winning is just a side benefit, and of course we all enjoy the competition, but participation is key. Joanne, I've gone on one of their beach walks and met such fun people, and it's a great workout too. And so resolution seekers, check out Silver Striders. It's open to all levels of fitness. Now, Joanne, a new year brings more than just resolutions. It's often bringing change, and we are in the midst of the changes going on to the Sun City Technology Resources. Yes, yeah. yes we are. Our Sun City News team had a chance to find out why this change was so important and timely. New apps, new website, new online ticket system. Lots of questions, lots of opinions. Norma Taylor had a chance to speak with Eric Parsons, Chief Information Officer of AAM. Take a listen to how and why the technology update was necessary for Sun City's vitality. I'm here with Eric Parsons, who's AAM's Chief Information Officer. Welcome, Eric, to Sun City News. Thank you for having me. Well, Eric, why are there so many changes being made to the technology right here in Sun City? Great question, great question. I've been getting it a lot over the past week. Um, and it gets down to the fact that there was an audit done in 2014 by an outside group that came and gave the board some recommendations. We came in, I didn't know about this audit, and we did an audit ourselves, a full analysis in 2016. We came to the same conclusion. And that was Sun City is a big organization. It needs to be run like a business, and its IT should be the same way that a business would run their IT. And so that means all of the software should be supportable. All the software should be backed by a stable organization. So that way they get updates and stay secure. And you're not held accountable to a single person. So my Sun City app, for instance, is a very popular app. It did a lot of stuff for the residents. But it was developed on a platform that was discontinued over five years ago. And it was developed by a single individual who didn't want to work with Sun City any longer. So it puts Sun City in a really awkward position then, right? And so we didn't think that was tenable. We thought that the Sun City as an organization should work with organizations that they have a contract with that they can be relied upon. The other thing that we identified for the organization was you probably don't want to hold on to residents bank account and routing information. Everybody knows about all the scams and hacking that has been happening and it's a liability for the Sun City as an organization to house that themselves. And so our recommendation was to find a third party that can then go and give all of that data to and it's their job to protect it and be able to manage it. And that was Paley. So that's the Paley's partner that we provided to um, Sun City or recommended to Sun City. Um, and the other one was, the other big one was uh, disaster recovery. All the systems before we made this change were housed at Palmetto Commons. So that meant if there was a hurricane or Palmetto Commons got damaged in any way, all your systems went offline. And so I think Hurricane Irma came was a good example. It was supposed to hit here. We had to evacuate. We pulled some of the equipment to be able to protect it. That took down the website. That took down the guest passes. That took down the tools that everybody here needs to be able to operate. And we didn't think that was what success looked like for us. And so we recommended that they use cloud-based systems. So that way, all you need is internet and power to be able to run these. And so that was why we needed to make all of those changes. Well, you have some good reasons there, Eric. But one question, why did everything have to be rolled out all at once in January? Oh, that, that is a great question. And, and to be honest, I wish we didn't have to do it all at once. I wish we didn't have to do it all in January. Uh, a lot of my staff uh, didn't find me very popular because they were working through the holiday to, to make this happen. The reason, though, was we wanted to be able to, to do the transition at the beginning of an accounting year. And so that would allow Sun City to have year-over-year -year financial analysis, and it would allow them at the end of this year to save money on their audit because now auditors would only be auditing one system versus two. Now, why all at the same time? When you change that accounting system, all of those other systems are attached to that. And so all those other systems would break immediately once Jonas was no longer available. And so that's why we went and made the change all at once. And we would have preferred to do it piecemeal. Unfortunately, we weren't given that opportunity based on how you guys were set up. 
Okay, I see that. Now, does the new systems here, do they lock the community into using AAM as a management company? Unfortunately, no. <laughs> um, really? Yeah, no, it, they don't, they don't, they don't. And here's why, and here's why. Um, all the software that we chose, and this was part of our recommendation too, should be off the shelf software. So anybody could be able to go buy that software. And Sun City as an organization has a contract with each of those software providers that AAM is not part of, right? So the one piece of software that we're hosting for the uh, community is called VMS. It's the accounting package behind everything. But that is the off the shelf software as well. And lots of other accounting companies, uh, management companies use that. And a lot of other communities use that. So it'd be easy to be able to transition from us to somebody else. Okay. All right. Now, will the community association need developers on staff to maintain the new systems? Because we understand that in the past there was a lot of custom code. Does the two technology replace those programs? Or, you know, great, explain Great, great question. And the answer is no. I, I don't think that Sun City wants to be in the business of developing a bunch of custom code. It's expensive to be able to do it. And so part of the goal of this solution was to choose large software companies that are able to be able to support this so Sun City doesn't have to pay for that themselves. From your AAM's perspective, what kind of questions are our residents interested in? Oh, absolutely. Um, one of the, the top questions, and it's an important question, it's a good question, is wh what do I do with my payments? What's happening with that, right? And the answer is, if you were set up on recurring ACH, so you took a check and took it over to Palmetto Commons and they took money out of your account on the 30th of every month, that is fine. We migrated your system, your uh, account over to the PayLease partner and AAM is going to pay that recurring cost for being able to do those transactions. So you would not have to do anything. If you went and uh, sent a check in every month, you can still do that. You just go to a new address and we're going to communicate out that new address. It's on the website, it's in the app. But we're also going to send out email communications. The other question we get is people who have signed up for bill pay. And that's if you go to your bank, I mm -hmm. bank at Wells Fargo, and you say, I want to send a check to this address for this amount on this date every month. Those people will also have to update it to the new address to go to the new lockbox. So that's one of the big questions that we've been getting. I think it's an important question because um, everybody wants to make sure that they're getting their dues paid, which is, which is good, and the community wants that as well. Um, one thing to note is the board has given a, a window for there'll be no late fees, so that way it gives the residents an opportunity to make sure they have everything pointed to the correct place. Is there going to be more to come in the future? No, oh, absolutely. There will be more. Um, this, is the, the, this isn't the end. This is the start of the new platforms, right? Um, somebody used to tell me that when you have a hammer, uh, it, when everything looks like a nail, all right? It was a generally tool. Good, good. Um, so now we have new tools. We have screwdrivers, everything else. So as we go and progress through this rollout, we'll be able to add new things. Since we started this in January 3rd, lots of people have already seen changes. We're listening to the community and have incorporated that into the systems. The one thing that I would ask is to be patient as we start to go through this, because we found that there's a lot of data cleanup. There might have been data that people hadn't updated in 15 years in some cases. Um, and now they're seeing it for the first time, right? And they're realizing that it's not up to date. So we're working through all that. And the staff here has new systems as well. So this new systems for them, and as they become more comfortable and familiar with them, they'll start using more and more of the features. Well, thanks, Eric, for coming on the show and explaining to our residents some of the questions that they have regarding this new technology launch. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Eric's input helped me understand why the timing of this was so important. And kudos to CAM for their multi-level approach to getting us all on board with these new systems. Definitely. Definitely, Georgia. That's right. We had emails with tutorials and direct links, launch week, web help, and of course, Sun City TV, helped by Broadcasting Tech Update Info. Don't forget to look for continuing update information. And as always, our own neighbors pitched in as volunteers. Joanne, go ahead and tell us about that. Our Sun City Computer Club remains a great asset as the technology launch progresses. Deb Dennis and Honey Burt from the Computer Club were in our studio to discuss the update and how they can help our residents. Well, I'm here with Honey Burt, who's the Facilities Coordinator and Chairperson for our Computer Club, and also Debbie Dennis, who's Vice President and Education Chair for the Computer Club. Hi, Welcome Norma. to Sun City News, ladies. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for asking. Well, Honey, can you tell us about the type of questions or the help that our residents have really needed the most? The basic problems that we were having is most of the database did not quite follow into the new system. So and I think the best help that we can do for our residents is I want to call it a little hand-holding. 
they can do it by themselves, but they just need a little push so that we can help them. And the other good news was Hidden Cypress, with all the helpers that the computer club provided and what they did, we were able to do a one-on-one. -on -one. And, and it was very successful. So I'm very pleased that this has happened, and I was glad that they asked us, and we will see what else we can do. Okay, so providing guidance to our residents Correct. was a key, was key, Correct. as I take it. I agree. And Deborah, if a resident is not comfortable using technology, which is, you know, pretty common when you get to a certain age, but, you know, still people are doing it, how can they get in touch with you to register for a class so they can learn? While the computer club isn't going to offer the same kind of website training classes that were offered this week, we are offering individual help to get people registered. We have scheduled four specialized training classes where residents will sit one-on-one -on -one with one of our volunteers to help them fill out everything that they that we can help them with uh, it's scheduled on january 28th february 4th february 11th and february 18th from four to six this is outside of our normal help time because we wanted to reach people who maybe still worked or were still out of town there will be specialized uh, signups for this because it's one-on-one -on -one and information can be found on our website uh, in addition, for our club members, they can always come to one of our regularly scheduled help club sessions, which we offer over 20 hours of help during the week. We're training all our helpers, no matter if they specialize in Apple, whether PC, whether Chromebook, Google, or whatever, we're training them all so they can help with the website registration. Unfortunately, some of the data information mm -hmm. we can't change because it has to do with the deed of the property and that the uh, residents need to go to Palmetto Commons to get help for that. One last question Debbie and this is to you. Suppose a person is not computer savvy, really can't get on the computer. What advice would you have? And they've never used the computer system. What advice would you give that person? So Norma that's a good question. Well Many of our residents are computer savvy. If you're not, and if it makes you uncomfortable, you don't have to make any changes to the way you do things now. Although you would want to make sure your data is up to date, but that can be done at Palmetto Commons without you uh, registering for the website or using the application. But if you would like to learn, Come to one of the individual help sessions and we will walk you through going step by step. We're very nice people there and we don't <laughs> bite. <laughs> Honey, do you want to add to that? Yes, I think I would because uh, now that we've taken this giant step to do this, uh, I, I just want to put in a little plug that even if you're not computer savvy, I think you should join this because one of the major, major improvements is that, heaven forbid, there's a hurricane, there's some kind of a warning. There now is a system where they can reach us and they don't have to take the equipment with them. This new system is in the cloud because that to me is important because we kind of tend to live in this situation. But they did a nice job. Well, in spite of it all, the computer club seems to be offering a great resource for our residents to get updated in this new technology launch. And ladies, you are doing a fantastic job, and thanks for coming on the show and explaining that there's help here for some of us who are a little bit getting stuck and a little bit slow in launching into this technology launch. Thank you again. Neighbors helping neighbors. That's right. Let's add another story of Sun City helping others. Our Sun City Roadrunners held a charity wine tasting, silent and live auction event, where they raised $16,000 to benefit Bluffton Self-Help and Marantha Farms Animal Rescue. Our Sun City TV news team was there along with 400 of our residents to check in on the fun and philanthropy. I'm here with Tom Balliette. Yes. And Tom is the president of the Sun City Roadrunners Club. Mm -hmm. And you've got a big event going on here, Tom. What is we it? We do. We have our uh, annual, second annual, 
uh, wine tasting and, uh, and auction event uh, where you have 400 people coming tonight. So that's a, a wonderful uh, event for our second year. Last year we had um, about half the number of people here. We raised $10,000. Whoa! Yes, and we, uh, we split that 50-50 with Maranatha Animal Rescue, uh, which is a Jasper County up near Ridgeland. Uh, and the other half goes to Bluffton Self-Help. Uh, so we kind of get to, to both sides of, of the interests of the club. Those are our two official charities okay. uh, that we've chosen. chosen. I've been with uh, Maranatha as a volunteer for, an, for a year, and I've been supporting them for the past four or five years through the Roadrunners. And the Roadrunners have done a magnificent job in taking care of uh, charities and making donations, both to uh, Maranatha and to other worthwhile organizations. So, yes, we like Holly. We wish that she would find herself a good home. I'm here with Kim Hall of Bluffton Self-Help. And Dave, Dave Wetzel. Wetzer, who's a volunteer, Sun City volunteer at Bluffton Self-Help. And can you tell us a little bit about Bluffton Self-Help? We are. We serve about 5,000 people annually. Um, we're primarily a food bank, and we also do free clothing and emergency financial assistance for our neighbors in need. We also have an education resource center uh, for folks to navigate different resources and tools as they find their pathway. You've got a lot of people and oh, yeah. people here for the wine and also silent auction mm -hmm. and you have a professional auctioneer coming. Tell yeah. us about that. Sure. So we have about 80 items on our silent auction uh, and then we have regular auction items. We'll do the silent auction. We'll quit that about 7.15 or thereabouts um, and then we'll seat everybody. We'll add some more chairs and uh, we'll seat everybody and then we'll proceed with the regular auction. Uh, for those other items. We have a professional auctioneer who's part of our club uh, and he's the one that's uh, going to be running that. So it'll be a fun event. We had a lot of fun last year. Uh, we're, we're expecting a lot of fun this year. So. Okay, and in the meantime people can go around and taste some wine. So it's a hundred bottles of wine which is a tremendous donation uh, and that allows us to spend every penny we bring in, or just about every penny we bring in uh, for the two um, charities that we, we support. Well, I hope you raise a lot of money tonight. I do too. It should be fun. Good luck. Are you Thank gonna, you. Are going to bet on anything? Absolutely. All right, yeah. Some golf packages there, <laughs> there some are. restaurants. Hey, Absolutely. I got to eat, right? You got to do that. You got to do that. Thank so. you very okay, much, Okay, thank you. Sun City at its best in helping out. In another helping story, before we close this month's show, we want to introduce you to more of our behind-the-scenes SCTV crew. Check out the people who help us sound and look good. When we do an audio check, we have the, uh, the talent outside. We call it talent, the people who are on air. And when they talk, we do an audio check, and you would see this, this slider up, and we would get the sound coming out of the, uh, the, the speaker here. And it all gets mixed together. My role as director is to watch the proceedings and make sure that the resultant recorded video is going to edit well. If someone on air makes a mistake, I have to decide how far back to go so that everything looks good and we don't have a jump cut in the video. I'm Susan McGreal. As a script coordinator, essentially I organize many contributors' thoughts and ideas, and time, space, the continuum. What is most fascinating about SCTV is I'm continually learning. Whether it's a club info segment, a snapshots interview, a Jasper County First Friday summary, or Cam Weekly News, there's always an O, oh, or really, or tell me more aspect to the news. And I'm Larry Kilkoff. I had no broadcast experience coming into SCTV. All my experience was in magazine and newspaper journalism, so it was logical for me to come in to, to this endeavor as a script writer, and I owe Susan a great deal as my mentor. The thing that's most satisfying to me, it, nothing is more satisfying to me than collaborating with creative people, and the opportunities to do that here are just really never-ending. It really is outstanding. Well, that's extra for February. I'm Joanne Hines. Please check out the program guide and sensations for our other SCTV monthly shows. 
And I'm Georgia Lash. Thank you for watching. Please join us again next month as we bring you extra coverage of stories and features from Sun City News.